there's there's something that keeps drawing me back to the ocean, and, and part of it I think is that you know maybe we as creatures, you know, starting off in the ocean, there's sort of like a, almost like a primal sort of connection. There was actually um, almost a decade of, of time lag between um, the first time I came to Hawaii and then when I came back. What I found was that on the big island, it was, it's an entirely different sort of climate. It's an entirely different experience than the other islands. And it appealed to me that we have this point at the bottom of the Hawaiian chain, which is South Point. It's the southernmost point in the United States. And Something just sort of drew me to it. I started going down with my camera and I started um, exploring along the edges of the coastline. So when you first walk, you see this incredible, spectacular panorama. And if you stay on the trail, you miss it. But if you start walking closer to the coast and actually hug the coastline, in these incredibly scenic places, there are massive piles of marine debris, massive piles of plastic, um, big net balls, you know, drift nets that have sort of rolled around in the ocean and found each other and made um, these multicolored flotillas, you know, some of them are as big as a small whale. When I first came upon them, they were like, the, you know, as an artist, they were beautiful. The color, the, the texture, the formation of it. it almost seemed like it already was installed by an artist you know that's the sort of random trace of the natural forces that are working on it so I started I started collecting the marine debris and that's what I worked on um, last year I collected and carried out um, 25 or 30 pounds uh, of plastic that I found there in, in these sort of piles and I started kind of looking through it and I noticed how really this becomes like this um, picture of us, picture of humanity, picture of late global capitalist society. Uh, we have so many objects that have made our lives easier, you know, it's very convenient to have something handy that's uh, disposable um, and, and yet That's the problem, they're too disposable. So the, the two main things you see in this marine debris are piles of plastic objects that had their origin in um, you know, some sort of functional, useful item. And those are, a lot of those are the things that we see every day. We use them every day. Um, the drift nets are also made of plastic, but a lot of people don't really know what they look like. They don't even realize what they, they function as. So I wanted to connect those two things together and uh, use the, the, the plastic objects to make like a physical kind of body connection um, to make a familiarity with a person looking at this. If you're looking at the web and you realize that you see a toothbrush in it, 
and you yourself brush your teeth every day, then you, you see a picture of yourself. You see something that is familiar to you. This one's, I'll try this one instead. It's just sort of voluminous material. And even the fact that once they're in the ocean for a while, they become tangled. That was the, another metaphor, like a, of, a, of a tangled web. You know, we have the quote, what a tangled web we weave. Well, that was all, to me, was kind of laid out in front of me. So I, I kind of discovered these, these things, and, and it just instantly made a picture for me. One of the um, one of the parts of this that you know it's like sort of a dual function is every time I go down to the beach I'm, I take back as much as I can carry um, so sometimes 25 or 30 pounds and and um, I'm trying to kind of perform like a beach cleaning um, so one of the ideas that I I would love for people to uh, you know maybe they they think this would be interesting to do too is to, to go to their own beaches to find, you know, whatever um, materials are in their community and take it off the beach and make something out of it. Make something out of it that um, gets it out of the environment but puts it in front of people's awareness. And I thought that what I wanted to do was make a, a sculpture that connected the land to the sea. And for me, the, the spider web was an image that, that functioned in that way. And when I thought about it in conjunction with the, the drift nets, it made sense because the, they're both traps, they're both predatory tools. The spider uses them to catch its prey and the drift nets we are using to catch our prey. So my vision about having the, the webs to start with was to make a large scale sculpture and ultimately I really want them to be big enough to be seen if they were to hang in an urban environment off the side of the building. Um, so this really, this first drift web is a prototype. And the name is important because of the connection between the idea of drifters. The, the plastic that moves across the ocean is circulating from you know, all corners of the globe. And the drift nets are also circulating in the water. They're, they're actually floating and drifting, and that's how they catch. And it seemed like to call this a drift web made the link back to the drift net.